My name's Stephen Cole, and I, my first fair was uh, 1977 uh, when the Hodads, the tree planting cooperative, did all of the security here. It was still small, all the Hodads wanted to help. And uh, I, I came as the paying public that year, but the next year I was a member of the Hodads, and they uh, had me at the admissions crew. And then I worked um, on the, uh, it's called the Old Highway now. It was, it was 126 territorial, but you know, now the new highway is out there. But um, real boring shift. Um, maybe I should say I came, I was raised in Ohio, went to school in Kentucky, uh, worked in Atlanta, Georgia in the uh, rock and roll natural food business. And because my sister lived in Portland, I came out here and visited her in the mid 70s a lot and then liked it. So. Came out to live in 77, went to the fair, paid, tried to sneak in, got caught. Um, 78 as a hodad, ad admissions, then the midnight to 6 a.m. shift on the old highway, <laughs> very boring. We kept having to do radio checks all night long, which you know really irritated you know the main campers there in Fair Central. Uh, you know, because they keep the radio in case of emergency. It was like, hey, uh, there's a, really nothing to do except a radio check. And um, one night there was like some uh, dry lightning way off in the east. And uh, so uh, we had a, a, a big, big deal about that, you know, really kept the uh, main campers awake for a long time about that. And then when it gets to be uh, sunrise, we would say there's a strange lightening effect in the east. Did you say lightning or lightening? No, there's a lightening. It's not lightning. Anyway, um, I did that uh, 78 till about 80, and I was a crew coordinator after I went from admissions to the highway. And then uh, 1981, Oh, 18, 81 to 83 was security on Highway 126, and then 84 I took over the sweep, which was in sore need of demilitarization. It used to be people would hold hands and that would be the trigger for the uh, uh, gate crashers, the line crashers, to play Red Rover, Red Rover, you know, and they bust through and we had the, the big guys there and they'd chase them down and grab them and drag them out past horrified onlookers. <laughs> so I demilitarized it through um, a banner, which basically told people what was going on, the fair is closing, please exit behind you, and uh, music. We had our own little uh, vibe, traveling vibe that kind of demilitarized the zone as we moved through it. And uh, kids also helped hold the banner and, you know, nobody wants to, you know, bang through kids, you know, you're not going to be that creepy. So that was like 84 to 89. Um, in 90, there was a crew here called the River Rats <laughs> that was doing security on the Long Tom and they were sneaking all their friends in, you know, from this side to that, just, you know, shuttle, shuttle, shuttle. Fair Central found out about it, fired them all, and there was a vacancy, and I hated the sweep. It was just, I was always getting like banged in the head by a disgruntled gypsy with a tambourine, you know, or something. I was, it was always something. Uh, Ken Kesey, in fact, uh, came out for our 25th anniversary on main stage, and I had a vid cam because the uh, main camp said, uh, well, we know you have a vid cam for the sweep. Would you film Kesey talking on main stage about our 25th anniversary? Oh, sure. So bang, I got it on me. He goes, I'm tired of kissing hippie ass. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you could tell, you know, he was like, he'd get questioned, you know, about, you know, uh, who are you? Uh, what, sometimes a great what? One flew over the what? And he, so he was just, you know, didn't have credentials and thought, you know, if, if I can't get in here, I can't get in anywhere. And, um, he was calling for like the overthrow to resist the sweep on Saturday. This was Friday. So the next day, sure enough, uh, there was like one guy, a, a leader of about 20 or 30 little uh, uh, hippie kids. And, uh, you know, we're not leaving. Ken Kesey said, you're risen the sweep. And so, uh, okay, let's see. Well, uh, let's get Whitebird over here with their restraining stretcher. And we'll put it down there right next to this guy and give him a chance to, you know, think about it. And he said, if you kick me out of here, it's the end of the hippie dream. And I said, dude, Kesey is a prankster. He's the one that put you up to this. I'm not falling for that prankster stuff. Beat it. So he left and, uh, you know, White Bird didn't have to strap him down and haul him out. And the kids followed him. But um, I was glad to get 
from the sweep to uh, the river. And uh, we renamed the River Rat crew the OCF Navy, the Hellbenders, and um, went from a crew of four to eight, went from our old camp over on the other side, near, uh, it was at the intersection of, Sn of Smile and Snivel, which we called Smirkwood. Smile, Snivel, Smirkwood. And uh, we were there for maybe four or five years, and then they bought, you know, this side, the far side, and got this camp. This is called Ichiku Park. And uh, we've had the, I did the Navy for about 15 years, about 90 to 05, and during that time, um, we, in 93, we caught the, uh, for a couple years, there were these kids who lived uh, with their families over uh, near Old Highway, and they'd come down here with a box of produce, raw, eggs, tomatoes, and we're like bowling for hippies. They'd come right down on this beach at 11 or 12 o'clock on Friday and Saturday night and throw stuff, rocks sometimes. You know, one person got hit with a rock, actually drew some blood. You know, the Navy had to respond, so we staked out the beach on Saturday, and then um, five of them crept out there and were starting to throw stuff when we sprung them and got, we caught three out of five and the lawyer was in the sauna like main camp didn't know what to do. fair central didn't know what to do with them well you got me you should have just chased them away we don't know what to, we don't want them I said well, well you got to do something so the the lawyer said we'll ferry him across the river and we'll uh, call their parents from fair central and so we're thinking, God, you know, please don't capsize, <laughs> you know, nobody gets hurt here. But that's what we did, and uh, everybody liked the fact that we caught the uh, rock and egg throwers. But um, I retired in 06, uh, turned it over to Mike Sperling, Admiral Sprinkles. And um, our grog circle has gone from toasting and boasting to more of a mellow music uh, scene. We don't do so much... Uh, uh, not, not too much grog, not too much huzzahing and, and boasting or bragging, but uh, we do like getting together and making music, and this is a beautiful camp. We really love it. So uh, that's the scene anymore, uh, more than anything else. And I want to talk a little bit about our themes. We had 10 themes originally in Smirkwood and uh, Ichiku Park, and after 10, we decided just to recycle. Uh, so the 10 themes that we recycle after 10, so this year we're up to uh, Vikings and Norsemen and Women number three, the third time we've been through the cycle. But the first one was Robin Hood, and we sort of like, he was always in the bosky glade and the dingly dell, and anybody that uh, crossed him, uh, he'd say, mayhaps I'll crack thy knave's pate for thee. You know, just that kind of talk. You know, like doing him a favor, I'll do it for you. Uh, number two was Fairy Folk, number three Camelot, and we had uh, the heart and soul of the Navy was a man named Sir Kenneth, and he got his Sir from our Camelot theme, the, the third theme, and he uh, tragically had a heart attack a few years back, but we have a memorial I'd like you to get a shot of before you go, and uh, he still is with us. Uh, four was the Navy, just kind of like Navy terminology, ship terminology. Uh, then we did Privateers and Buccaneers, and that was before Pirates of the Caribbean. We did Druids and Celts before Braveheart, you know, we were a real trendsetter. Uh, Brigadoon, uh, which comes magically to life for a few days each summer, just like the fair. We did Brigadoon and the Scottish Magical Highlands one year. This year it's Vikings and Norsemen and Women, number three. The reason I included women is because uh, like these Norsemen had a hard life, they'd be up on the farm, and if there was another farmer who thought he could go in and take the guy's goods and maybe his wife and kids and make them servants, uh, if he could go in there and slay the guy quickly, it was okay, but if it was a fight and the woman heard it from the hut, she'd get her sword and would undoubtedly tip the difference, you know, win the day for the homesteaders there. Uh, so you didn't want to mess with them, uh, you know, man and woman. Uh, the man you had to dispatch quickly. Then we did a Midsummer Night's Dream, you know, very much like this place, Midsummer. And then we did uh, number 10, 
naiads and dryads. And naiads were the, in Greek myth, were the water nymphs similar to the selkies and sirens, mermaids. And the dryads were German myth, they were the tree spirits. And so uh, we got a lot of uh, Shakespearean uh, quotes that I use in the grog circle because there's so much that applies. And one is from As You Like It. Uh, these uh, Italian dukes and lords get exiled into the woods and they find they really like it. You know, said, so, you know, how much better than the envious court, you know, and you know, this our haunt. And um, they also talk about adversity, which is something <laughs> we all deal with. But uh, the, the quote is that how adversity defines us. It tells us and makes us who we are, how we respond to it. Somebody like Trump, born with a silver spoon, no adversity, becomes cruel, heartless, maniacal. Uh, but people who have to, you know, it's like they say, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Some things do kill you. And some things, now I'm a curmudgeon, so I just don't put up with it. <laughs> I've cut off a lot of friends just because I just, I felt like, you know, I was going around to people going, will you be my friend, you know, and just, pff, ah, I'm too old for that, curmudgeon power. But I do believe in adversarial um, uh, overcomes, and, uh, and, and Shakespeare said it best in As You Like It about, uh, sweet are the uses of ad adversities, uh, for they make us what we are. And then he talks about oh, uh, some other stuff, but then goes back to, uh, and this our public haunt finds, no, yeah, no, and, and this our life, exempt from public haunt, finds tongues in trees, books in the running brooks, sermons in stones, and good in everything. I would not change it. I think if we learn from our past, uh, this has been a bad year uh, for the fair. I don't know if you followed, you know, the, you know, the con controversy, the way the Brits would say. But, um, the, you know, the fair has kind of been uh, uh, susceptible to the same kind of tribalism. And I, I really put it on the media's shoulders for creating and fostering this uh, divisive behavior. And I, I, you know, I've kept a journal since I was like, 12 and I'm trying to transcribe my journal now to maybe write a book later and I've been at it for a couple years and I'm only up to 1994 <laughs> but even back then I was writing it's the media's fault you know we've been duped into thinking you know uh, Roger you know Mudd and all these you know Walter Cronkite types are our friends they're really they get together at the start of every newscast and say, what are our talking points? Well, the government wants us to say this, but we have these protesters. Okay, which one should we spin? You know, it's, that's the way it happens for decades now. So uh, if we can learn from that and uh, understand how even like the Fair Family News tends to foster that tribalism by, uh, by, by presenting these opponents as you know as views against each other instead of views for the common good and um, I had a, a real problem in a local sauna not this one but Emerald Park sauna with a Trumpanista and he was always going on about no it's black and white man it's simple no it's not you know he's always wanting to go with you know uh, Trump won uh, all us uh, you know, snowflakes or, or losers, get over it. You know, he won, so just shut up. And uh, it's so divisive, and I'm always going, hey, you know what? Life is not really like that. It's complicated. And it's not just black and white. There's vices and virtues. And there's a million of each one. But vi virtues are the things that money can't buy, like manners, morals, respect, integrity, trust, class, courage, common sense, and, wait for it, patience, and of course love. So if we can learn from mistakes and divisiveness in the past, uh, there's nowhere for the country fair to go but up. Yeah. Uh, for years in the 90s, we'd, uh, we did a changing of the guard ceremony, and, and the, the blurb for it went like this. A silly side thought in 1997 has turned into a tradition 
Admiral Cole's OCF Navy crew, responsible for keeping the Long Tom River and its surrounding riparian zone secure, needed a way to signify the transfer of authority from the morning watch to the PM crew. What better way to herald the event than with skirling bagpipes, marching sailors, and percussion handling of paddles? That's what we do, and then some. Every day, about 2.30 or so, listen for the pipers tuning up near booth 491. When they crank up Gary Owen, watch for the Navy personnel across the river to come marching out of the woods just as others sail to shore. We muster on the beach and verbally, with great fanfare, transfer the power load from the 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. shift to the 3 p.m. 9 p.m. shift. We wrap it up with a song from HF Pinafore, a rousing rendition of Scotland the Brave on the pipes again, many hearty huzzas, and then back to work. So the uh, HMS Pinafore song, we've changed the words around a bit, but mainly it went like, <clears throat> We sail the ocean blue in our saucy ships of beauty. We're sober and we're true, ha ha, and attentive to our duty. When the balls whistle free over the bright blue sea, we stand to our paddles all day. When at anchor we ride on the Pike Street tide, we've plenty of time for foreplay. Ahoy, ahoy, ahoy! ahoy! We sail the ocean blue in our saucy ships of beauty. We're sober and we're true, wink, wink, and attentive to our duty. We're sober and we're true, we sail the ocean blue. Huzzah!